Support for WCBU's On Deck comes from Jaguar Land Rover Peoria on Allen Road, providing personalized service with every certified pre-owned Land Rover. Benefits include a 165-point inspection and a one-year unlimited mile warranty. More at jaguarlandroverpeoria.com. The system for funding higher education in Illinois could change dramatically. That's just one of the things you'll want to hear about to start your day for Thursday, August 15th. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, a first draft of an ordinance to ban homeless encampments on public property in Peoria brings hours of debate to the city council. WCBU's Joe Deacon reports. The proposed ordinance would establish increasing penalties of fines up to jail time for violating a ban on camps. It follows closely in the footsteps of similar ordinances passed by Pekin and Morton after a Supreme Court ruling in June decided fining the homeless is not cruel and unusual punishment. Mayor Rita Ali says the city wants to make it clear that Peoria is committed to ending street homelessness. But I think that we have to do it in a very strategic and humane manner with a very strategic, well thought out plan that engages our partners. District 3 Council Member Tim Riggenbach says Peoria's proposed language falls short of considering the basic human rights of unhoused individuals. But District 2 Council Member Chuck Grabe says homelessness has been a major problem in the city for far too long. The people of Peoria need to know that we're being proactive about this. I don't want to hear that we're moving hastily on anything. Groups like Jolt Harm Reduction and Home for All Continuum of Care have criticized ordinance batting camps, saying they needlessly impose fines on those who can't pay them and criminalize being homeless. For WCBU's On Deck, I'm Joe Deacon. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. Senator Tammy Duckworth calls Republicans questioning the military service of Minnesota Governor and Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Walz despicable. And local and federal officials are projecting extreme confidence ahead of the Democratic National Convention coming to Chicago next week. Plus, a split Peoria City Council denied a liquor license for a relocated restaurant in the Twin Towers Mall. You can find more of these stories and all the details at WCBU.org. A measure in Illinois would transform how the state funds higher education. Peter Medlin has more. NIU President Lisa Freeman served on the state's Commission on Equitable Public University Funding, and their task was to create a data-driven approach to funding higher ed. That's because Freeman says right now, there is no formula. She says it's largely, what did you get last year, and then all public universities get a flat increase or decrease. And Freeman says it's an unfair system because schools are different. Some have larger endowments than others or serve more low-income students. We need a funding formula that's rational, that considers the size of the institution, the mission of the institution, and the type of students that the institution serves, because all of those have significant direct impact on the money you have to provide students with the experience that they expect, need, and deserve. The NIU president says a funding formula would also provide much-needed stability year to year. She says universities typically don't know how much money they'll receive until later in the fiscal year, which makes long-term planning more difficult. We have to guess, and having to guess means we have to be conservative, means sometimes we can't get ahead of lengthy procurement processes, Um, we miss opportunities for growth, and it's very frustrating. Freeman sat on the commission alongside students, professors, education nonprofit leaders, and legislators. Illinois Senate Majority Leader Kimberly Lightford was a co-chair on the commission, and she compared this process to when the state changed how K-12 through education was funded back in 2017, which she was a key part of. It took us years to do, and it was very political, and that's a part of why I created the commission, because I didn't want it to be legislative-driven. I didn't 
didn't want it to be a politically driven. I want it to be expert driven. Lightford says the K-12 through funding formula has been successful so far and inspired the push to do the same for higher ed. For example, both formulas are based around adequacy targets, calculating how much total money an institution would need to provide instruction and services and how far they are from that funding target now. She says no Illinois public university is adequately funded now, and the commission's report shows that the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign would be the closest to adequacy, and Northeastern Illinois University is furthest from adequacy, although the numbers aren't final. The formula weighs multiple factors unique to each school, like the cost of instruction, operations and maintenance, student services, and number of low-income students. Lisa Freeman says it also considers the university's mission, like NIU's. We have a distinct identity of combining access with a strong research mission. Our research mission requires investment, and supporting students who come from underserved communities requires an investment. Speaking of investment, Senator Lightford's new bill requests a lot of additional higher ed spending. Our new formula at $135 million new dollars a year for the next 10 years. That will move everyone to adequacy. Freeman says for years, state funding went down, which caused tuition to go up. From 2000 to 2020, state investment in colleges and universities in Illinois dropped by 46 percent and tuition and fees doubled. Freeman says the lack of investment hurts enrollment, and some students leave the state for cheaper universities, and many low-income students simply can't afford to go to college at all. Over the past decade, Illinois public university enrollment is down 7%, and Freeman says the extra cash would make public universities more affordable and allow them to invest in student services to help them succeed once they're at school. I think of academic support services, more peer tutoring, more advisors. Senator Lightford says there would be a review panel to tweak the formula as they go, and they also have an accountability system tracking how funding is directed, if schools are taking steps to lower student costs, if enrollment is increasing, and student outcomes. And she says the bill's now filed, but the work isn't done yet. They hope this new bill and a new way of funding higher ed marks a new era for Illinois public universities, one that's more affordable and more stable than the past few decades. I'm Peter Medlin. Now before we let you go, Peoria Park District's Parks on Tap comes to Detweiler Park tonight. Enjoy live music and some drinks in one of Peoria's tree-filled parks from 4 to approximately 8 p.m. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck Podcast on the NPR app, Apple, Spotify, or YouTube Music.